Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here, popping in. You know, it's something I've been thinking about. And as I'm looking around, I, one thing I do is I pay attention to the rings. I look at men's hands, I look at women's hands, and I do my own field research. You know, we always read these studies of this amount of people, this percentage of people are single, and this and that. I just look around for myself and just try to see, just being nosy. But one of the things I noticed is that it's some some good men that's single. And I'm trying to pinpoint as a man, and it's always funny to me when I'm talking about a man from a male perspective and women chime in with the definite answer. And um, that is hilarious. And and we need to stop doing that. So when if you notice anytime you see somebody ask me a question about a woman, I always say, listen, all I could have is an opinion. I'm I'm not a woman. I'm a man. So I understand what it is to be a man, to be a male, to, to have a thing swing between your legs, to think like a man, act like a man, to be a man. And I realize as men, it's only a couple of different ways we think. And I call it a grown boy and a grown man I break it down into two different ways like I don't and yes it's different little quirks and personality traits but a man when I look at a man a man typically gonna fall into one of those two categories a grown boy or a grown man and today what I'm noticing is that a lot of men I'm, I'm headed up to the uh, Home Depot so y'all I'm just talking to you while I'm riding what I'm noticing is a lot of men are staying single the men who are single, they, they stand single longer. And I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing. I feel like if it's you waiting on God and you being patient, it's a good thing. But what I'm trying to get down to is, is why and why is it becoming so much harder to find a wife? Y'all remember, you know, back in the day, it was easy to find a wife and when I met my wife and I, I'm still seeing a lot of people get married, but it's also becoming harder to find a wife. What I'm noticing for some of the good single men that I know, it's like they can't really meet the one. It's like the one is kind of elusive, so to speak. And that's interesting to me. And I don't know if it's physical or if it's spiritual, but it's very interesting to see. And one thing that I've realized is that women, a lot of women have become crazier. And that's a, that's a, tough word but i'm saying this too if you're a single woman make sure that you are occupying your time because i'm noticing now it's some good men who they kind of becoming crazy too and what i mean by this is the expectations are getting a little outlandish between men and women the expectations and social media has ruined relationships and so when you look at a relationship you're looking at it today through the lenses of social media so what you're seeing is you're seeing <clears throat> you're seeing reels you're seeing reels and you're seeing um TikToks, and you're seeing y'all gotta forgive me got some boss back here to throw away so you're seeing reels and TikToks, and you're seeing a lot of you're seeing couples with podcasts and so you're seeing a lot of highlight reels and so when you're seeing all these highlight reels it's making everybody couple look amazing it's one young lady who doing a big extravagant wedding right now that my wife follow. And um, she a sister. 
I don't know if she from Africa or the man from Africa, like their their family. But they doing a, a wedding, I feel like in America and a wedding in Africa. And it's huge, extravagant. Like they invite thing was like a magazine or several pages. And that type of stuff will mess you up if you single. If you and it's human nature to compare yourself to other people. It's human nature. We all want to say, oh, I don't compare myself to nobody. And no, that ain't, you know, I'm me. I don't pay attention to stuff online, but it's subconscious. You don't even realize that you're comparing yourself to other people. It's subconscious. You, you don't even realize it. You don't pick it up. And that's what's happening in these relationships. So we comparing and it's keeping single, single longer. Because, and I'm, I'm going to make a prime example to you now. It was a huge deal. This couple that spent $500 on their wedding. That was a huge deal. <laughs> That's a huge deal in 2022. When I married my wife in 2007, we didn't even have a wedding. We went to the courthouse. My wife ring cost me $69 plus tax and shipping because it was from the Home Shopping Network or QVC. It was a cubic zirconia three carat ring with rose gold and looked terrible. Looked terrible. Turned the finger green. Turned the finger green. $69 now and we got married and my wife she she said to me now she say you don't think I knew that ring was fake I'm like did you think I thought I, did you think I thought you thought it was real I'm like I thought we both knew that now I wasn't trying to pretend the ring was real now I just got it because it looked good $69 can you imagine the headlines that we, that I would be in, in 2022. Can you imagine the headlines? Just, just write the headlines. And all and every single woman would say, every single woman would say, he trash, sis, run. Sis, run, he is trash. Now, mind you, I was 22 years old when I proposed. But even if a 22-year-old proposed, and he don't need to propose if he can't afford no real rain. He can't afford no decent rain. I don't want to marry no broke man. He need to finish getting his life together. So today, it's not about love. It's about business today. And so now, what, what works? It's about business today. You see what I'm saying? And now what works? Me and my wife, we still powering through. Relationships ain't easy now because you're human, so you're going to have mood swings. You're going to have attitude issues. You're going to have all that different stuff. Y'all got to forgive me. Had made my turn. You're going to have this different stuff going on, so it ain't easy. You got to work through. You got to work through. And so, but look, 15 years of marriage. But when you look around, you see, and you don't know, you can't speak for the future because I could say, hey, I'm going to be married the rest of my life, but I don't know what spiritual warfare my wife could, could go through, what she could, you know, endure. She don't know what I could endure. So you just working and hoping and praying and you doing your part to the best of your ability. But nothing is guaranteed nothing is promised and that's the humility that i have learned in marriage because i used to be cocky about it oh love easy relationship easy love easy oh, i ain't never getting a divorce but now i got the reality because i'm seeing all these other people man i'm like they're human just like me you see these couples go through and a lot of people don't realize this when you look at these couples, these humans, like 
the, the, the ex, Shaquille O'Neal ex-wife. Shawnee O'Neal, she just, she she have, you know, and I know Shawnee, I spoke to Shawnee, I met Shawnee, uh, I believe I met her in person, and she have that, I don't know if the show's still going, but that show's very toxic, very ratchet, and now she marry a pastor, but guess what, for in order for Pastor Henderson to get married, he had to divorce, he had to divorce his wife, TDJ's daughter, and I'm speaking names now. I'm tired of, you know, just beating around the bush. People don't know who I'm talking about. TDJ's daughter. I believe she had a, um, not a one, Sarah. I believe, I don't know when she had her first child, if that was the one that had it at 13. But her husband, Torrey Roberts, had a wife with three kids. He had divorced her divorced her about a year later got with tdj's daughter so you see this divorce these pastors devon franklin preaching in everybody church married eight nine years go through a divorce that has humbled me to see that when you seen john gray go through the little public infidelity with his wife that's a pastor hill song the, the man up there in here, Chris Lentz or whatever his name was, cheat on his wife. And 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 now the well crazy to me about the woman he cheated with, she looked like she do tarot cards. She looked like a, a witch doctor to me. Like she looked like she didn't look like she had nothing to do with nobody church. Don't look like she believe in believe in God. I'm like, how you we got to pray. I ain't gonna talk bad about nobody. We got to pray. Then T.D. Jake's other daughter. Look at the spiritual warfare. How you notice when you one of the biggest voices in the world, and you have a daughter that daughters going through what they going through. That's spiritual warfare that a lot of times people take for granted. I ain't talking bad about nobody. I'm talking about the reality of this here thing. So now when you look at these marriages I just showed you. Was it marriage for love or was it marriage for business? Because me and my wife, 15 years, we still trudging through, but we had to marry on love. We married on love. We ain't have nothing going for ourselves business-wise, money-wise, wasn't no net worth being combined, ain't no prenup, because we ain't have nothing to lose financially. So today i feel like men and women are staying single so much longer because they're looking for men looking for a business deal disguised as love not all of them now not my mentees but it's a lot of men they're looking for a business deal and don't realize that business fall apart all the time i got a business partner we've been in business 11, 12 years, and, and I'm getting ready to dissolve the company. That's what you do in business. You dissolve the company. You pivot. You start a new company. You merge companies. You you do different things. Like, when you go into a relationship as a business deal, it's only some things that love can keep, that love can keep you going. Ain't nothing about the business that keep me and my wife together. It has to be love. And that's why I try to tell people, but it just depends on how you define business and how you define love. That's where the semantics come in. People's defining it in their own way. And that's where we get confused at. But if you're a single man looking at this or you're a single woman looking at this, I want to tell you, you know, make sure you being realistic. Make sure you being realistic. Make sure that you ain't got no outlandish you know standards that you calling it or preferences whichever it may be for you but make sure you being realistic because that's one thing i'm noticing is that it's a lot of situations to where i'm looking at men who they flooded with women it's so many women around them and can't pick one and that don't make sense to me that don't make sense to me um, and I want to tell y'all men, she is not going to be perfect. She is not going to be, she going to be nowhere near perfect. You hear me? 
You know why? Cause you ain't nowhere near perfect. You barely decent. If you a single man, I don't care if you God fearing, I don't care if you speaking in tongues, you barely decent. We got to get humble. We got to get real with ourselves. You barely decent. You barely decent. I just had a man come do junk removal. Here this man come over, this man doing junk removal. This man said in the summer that he, he was making $5,000 a week. He say some, one some week he'll make 7,000, but he, then he say the next week he might make two. So he said you got to manage your money, but he makes six figures on Thumbtack. And this is what I try to tell y'all about streams of income. Thumbtack. Thumbtack.com, they got an app. You go on there, if whatever you do, you could list your service. He say now they got four family members around the country doing Thumbtack, and they all make six figures. He came with his pickup truck, that you could get used for $10,000. He had a trailer hooked on there, and he, he was getting my son bed, mattress and bed frame, and put that in the back of the truck. And put that in the back of the truck. And I paid him $150. And the reason why, cause if I got to go come up here to Home Depot, get a U-Haul, I'm gonna pay Fifty some dollars, got to get gas, got to come up here 30, go back 30, load it up, take it to somewhere to try to dump it. Ain't got nowhere to dump it. So it's gonna cost me, based on my time and what I pay myself, that gonna cost me thousands of dollars. So boom, I get him 150, boom. I'm gonna call you back when I need to move the dressers. Just like that. It's women that'll overlook that man because he do junk hauling and this man making six figures. The man say he make $20,000 a month hauling junk and probably get to keep some of the stuff because you go to some people's house, they're going to be just redoing re some things, but, but the stuff they're giving away is perfect condition. We don't think about that. Listen, listen what I'm telling you. You got to believe in yourself, not love yourself, but I want to remind you, you barely decent. So stop with all them high behind standards. Look at character. Is this a good hearted person? If that's the key, then if, if, if they're a good-hearted person, that's what you need to focus on first. Because everything else going to fluctuate. My hairline gone. Got wrinkles in my face. I'm going down. But when my wife met me, I had abs. I was Mr. It. Look at me now. Looking bad. That's life. And you know what I noticed? This weekend, and I'm gonna do another video on it. I'm coming back, I'm gonna do another video on what I noticed. Hey, God bless you. Listen to this one more time and let this just sink in.